Hello, welcome back to my channel, Charlie's Lessons, and in this video we're continuing with speaking activities. And this time we're looking at speaking activities to practice the past simple. So in this video we're looking at how we use the past simple to talk about finished actions, states or habits in the past. So as I said in my other videos, I do want to mention that this is not a video that's going to focus on the form or the structure of the tense, but rather on the functions and how we get our students using them. So just to be clear, I'm not going to do this. Repeat after me, students. Do, did, go, went, come, came, eat. Eight. Yes, very good. We're learning the past simple. Now the first practical function that we use in our everyday lives is on a Monday morning when you see your friends, colleagues or classmates and what is it you usually ask? Well, what did you do on the weekend? I ask my students this every Monday. I usually get the same response though. Get into the habit of asking your students every Monday what they did on the weekend. And if they do not give you an answer that you are happy with, make them say it again and make this a routine in your class. The second practical function that we use the past simple for is to talk about our holidays. We love talking about our holidays. It doesn't matter if you're in school or at work, that one person who comes back from the holiday, if they had a really good time, then they do not shut up about it. So it's the same for our students. So what I usually do is if you're coming back from the summer holidays, so if you're in the September time, or if you're coming back in January, or if you're coming back after Easter, etc., then get your students to tell you everything they did on their holidays. If you're not at one of these convenient times of the year, then get your students to tell you about their last holiday. Where did they go? Who did they go with? What did they do? What things did they see? Really pull as much information as you can from them. You can even set the questions on the board and get students in pairs to ask each other what they did on their holidays and then get those students to feed back to the rest of the class. Now the third idea is not something that's probably very common nowadays with the advent of technology but when I was young it was quite common to write a diary. And in these diary entries, you would usually talk about what you did that day. One way to get your students doing this is to have a community diary in the classroom. So for example, have a notebook and have your students write just a few sentences about how their day went the day before. You don't need to ask the students to go into anything personal if they don't want to. And this will be again a good routine that you can incorporate into the class. If you don't have a physical option, then there are a lot of online options for writing diaries. A platform like Padlet has templates which are perfect for student contributions. And if you start one now, you can keep it going over the rest of the academic year. Now, if you have students who are not too keen on sharing personal information, which is to be honest, a lot of them aren't, but you could get them to talk about their favorite singer, favorite artist, favorite actor, favorite actress, and get them to think about, well, I wonder what they did yesterday. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly what that person did, but if one of your students is really interested in a famous person's life, they're probably gonna know enough to second guess what they did the day before. So for example, imagine you were talking about Justin Bieber. Well, in the morning he woke up, he probably made a TikTok video, earned a million pounds, um, and then he probably wrote a terrible song which went to number one in the charts and just went home and slept for the rest of the day because, you know, if you're Justin Bieber, you're probably rich and you don't need to do anything else. This next activity is great if you're teaching adults. If you're teaching kids, not so much. It's to get your students to think about when I was young. Ask your students to think of habits and routines that they did before. Now I know that there is a structure in English that we can use that has the same function, which is used to, but we can use the past simple, especially for lower levels, to talk about the same ideas. So get the students to think about what they did when they were certain ages, perhaps what they did when they were 10 years old, or what they did when they were 15 years old, or what they did when they were 20 years old. For example, when I was young, I hated cheese. I don't hate cheese now. In fact, when I was young, I loved melted cheese, but not cheese, you know, you understand, right? 
The next activity is something very typical we do in English speaking countries when we're giving news. And this is to say, well, do you want the good news or the bad news? To which then you reply with the good news and then the bad news. And this usually is in the past simple. So for example, typical thing that I say is, good news is I went to the supermarket. The bad news is I didn't buy anything you asked for. Or the good news is you're watching this video and getting all these great ideas to use the past simple in your class. The bad news is that you're going to have to subscribe, like and comment and watch the video until the end. This next activity is one that I love. It's called Alibi. Think murder mystery, but a lot simpler. Tell the students there's been a murder or a robbery. Or if you're teaching younger learners, let's just say, tell them that something bad has happened. Choose two students to be police officers and two students to be the suspects. Get the police officers to think of a list of questions that they'd like to ask the suspects. And then you as the teacher, give the suspects a guideline of questions that they can answer to come up with a story of where they were when the bad event happened or the murder or robbery. Once the two students have finished coming up with a story about where they were, separate them. Have one police officer interview one suspect and the other police officer interview the other suspect. Once they are finished, swap. And then when they're both finished, have the two police officers come together and compare their notes. Ask the police officers to think of any differences in the suspect's stories. If there are a lot of differences, you can charge the suspects with murder and send them to prison. No, no, wait, sorry, sorry. Uh, you can just tell the students that the police officers won. The next activity I use in my class to get my students speaking is a guessing game. And the idea is that we need to guess where a student went. So you ask one student to think of a place around the world, maybe somewhere famous, so it makes it a bit easier for the other students. And the other students have to ask them questions. So let's say I went to... Now you as a class have to think of questions to find out this place. Did you go somewhere in Europe? Did you eat croissants? Did you see the Eiffel Tower? And you would continue with these questions until you got the right answer and then elect another student to think of a different place. The next activity that we use, which is a function that is quite common, is to talk about the last time you did something. And again, when we're speaking in English, this is often a common question is when we want to know when was the last time you did this or when was the last time you did that? So for example, ask your students, when was the last time you went to the cinema? When was the last time you received a present? When was the last time you cooked? So for example, if you ask your students, when was the last time you went to the cinema? Then this is perfect for more follow-up questions in the past simple. Who did you go with? What did you watch? Did you like the film? Tell us about the film. So this opens up a lot more speaking opportunities for your students in the past simple. Thank you for watching this video on uses of the past simple and getting your students speaking using this tense. I hope that some of these activities can help your students improve how they talk about things that happened in the past. Please subscribe, like this video and leave a comment below if you're going to use any of the activities in this video and I'll see you next time.